right, everybody, looks like we are officially live. Welcome to day number five, your fifth and final day of boot camp. Of course, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far and that today I've got something very special planned for all of us uh, to really start to excel and adapt as traders, as professional investors, so on and so forth. And so, you know, for the first four days, we spent 80% of our time you know, on technical analysis and other advanced techniques. We spent the other 20% of our time understanding portfolio management and all that sort of stuff. And really there's only one area that we haven't covered yet. There's only one area that we haven't really dove into. And, and this specific area today that I wanna to talk about is something that I don't usually talk about. And it's because there is no good lesson in this that can force you to learn it. It's all about experience. And what that is, is the mentality behind trading and the psychology behind it. And when we talk about trading psychology, a lot of people maybe have heard the, the cliche adage that says, you know, trading is 90% psychological or mental and, and, and the rest of it is actually trading itself. Um, but it's really true. About 90% of the battle is up here. And so today I wanna to give you very tangible tips and tricks, things that I have done that have worked for me over the last six years to really increase my probability of winning, but my profitability overall. And so to begin this talk, and I've got kind of a list in front of me just so I don't get off track, because again, I've never talked about this. I wanna start by sharing with you where I came from. Because I think a lot of times, at least this is how I am, when I began you know, looking at successful people just five, six years ago, I really just felt like they were unreachable because at the beginning of you guys learning how to trade, some of you guys are brand new to trading. You, especially in the I Am Mastery Academy platform can go on and you can see educators. And these educators are probably talking faster than you can ever talk in terms of terminology. They're moving quick on the charts. They're implementing lines. They're, they're just, they're just overall better, they're faster, they're cohesive. And what happens is, is people get discouraged by that because they see these people doing really, really good things on their charts and they don't think they can ever get there. And before we begin, I wanna let you know that what you're doing is comparing your chapter one to their chapter five or six or 13 or 27. You're comparing a beginning product to a well-chiseled, almost in final stages product for a lot of these people. Don't do that. You're not going to be comparing to other people. That's just the first overlying thing I want to talk about today. So with that said, I want to kind of share, how did I get here? Um, you know, how did I begin currency trading? And I think to start, I want to just frame this by saying, I believe that the majority of people that trade currency, the majority of people that trade stocks, the majority of people that trade crypto, anything, are entrepreneurs at their core. They want to do what they want, when they want, with who they want, and spend their time doing anything that they can desire. And whether it be a network marketing business, a brick and mortar business, a digital marketing business, or trading currency, they wanna make money on their own terms without anybody telling them when they need to be there, when they can't be there, when they need to go to the bathroom, when they can eat, all that stuff. They want the freedom. And I've always chased that. Ever since I was you know, 16 years old, I've been thinking in my head, how can I make money through other avenues rather than the typical avenue of nine to five? I have nothing against going to work nine to five. I have nothing against that. In fact, for a lot of people, majority of people, that's the best option because that provides them structure, that provides them safety, and that provides them with the overall well-being and their mentality that they're gonna be okay. And so to begin, I just wanna kinda of open it up by giving you guys a brief story about how I got into trading. And so for me, I, uh, I didn't actually get into trading until I was 18, but I wanna share with you things I did prior. So first things first, I began working like anybody else ever does uh, at a small, area for me it was a local restaurant bussing tables and you know that's for those of you guys that don't know what bussing tables means it means literally just cleaning up after people when they get up and leave the restaurant i get the dishes i bring them to the dishwasher i wipe down the table i set it for the new customer to come in 
I did that for two years and then I moved up to becoming a bartender and I did that for two more years. Okay, so for the two years that I was bussing, I didn't know what trading was. For the two years I bartended, I did know what trading was, just to give you a reference. So from 16 to 18, that was when I was bussing. I didn't know what trading was. And during those two years, I did two different things that I think set me on the path to success. One failed, one succeeded. I think failure is a massive point here of emphasis. I failed miserably in my first business. The first business was called Odyssey Clothing. And this clothing line was just designed, I don't even know why, just because I wanted to own my own business. And I partnered up with a friend of mine. I'll never forget it. It was $300 uh, for my initial investment, which was to print the first round of shirts, build the website. And his, his contribution was $300. And that got us, I don't know, however many shirts, 50 to 100 shirts literally is all. Uh, that got us a website that enabled us to really get off the ground. And, and luckily, because of great family and friends, I was able to sell the first round of t-shirts. And that $600 total investment turned into, I think, $1,200 or $1,500. Bucks. We had doubled our money in the initial round. And those initial shirts were off of like uh, a print-on-demand website. The quality was just awful. And um, with that said, then we moved up the quality. We met a guy that, uh, that was in Oregon, and the quality went up. We paid a little bit more, higher quality shirt, that soft fabric everybody likes, not that cotton stuff, that soft, nice fabric, just better stuff, better printing. Custom tags, meaning custom sizing, when it said like large or medium, whatever, on the back, it was all custom. You know, everything was more custom. So we did that, that was the second round. All of our money back in on all inventory. We were, we were, our, our thing was, we were exclusive. So we're gonna run entire exclusive runs of these t-shirts um, and that second run nobody bought I mean some bought but 80% of our inventory sat in the back of my my trunk and that right there was amazing for me when I look back because that stopping point tested me to realize that just because you start something just because you try to learn something just because you build something doesn't mean it's gonna succeed and so with that said, I kept trying to sell them. They wouldn't sell. They wouldn't sell. I put my hands up. I'm not good at designing. I, I, I'm, 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 for those of you guys that haven't ever met me, I'm a lengthy six foot five kid that doesn't have the best fashion sense probably. Um, and I, I, again, I don't have the best design elements and I was the one that was designing this stuff. So it, it didn't work. I stopped. That is when I started after that took about a year, but after that, I'm 17 years old. I started flipping shoes and a lot of people know this is where my successful entrepreneurial journey has began and knock on wood this I've been going on this ever since this happened. And so what I would do is I would buy random shoes from air force one lady liberties, which were these crazy shoes that changed colors to uh, like these gone fishing foams, which were like fisherman shoes. They came with fish nets to different Jordan shoes, Kevin Durant shoes, the whole nine yards. I can think of a ton of them. And what I would do is I would buy them for say $200 and I would go into a private group. It was a Facebook group with a guy that had like a hundred thousand followers. He was a big time YouTuber and he had a group for buying and selling sneakers. And so I would literally go on East Bay, Foot Locker, Champ Sports, you know, Adidas, all these websites, and I would buy them for say $200, and I would sell the same shoe for 400 or even 600 the same day with just the receipt. The shoe would then ship to my house that later that week, I would just take a video of it on YouTube, and at that point in time, I would then have the video to show that I'm legit for future sales, and then I would take a little video with it to build my YouTube channel, um, which, by the way, is the same channel I, I even use now. Um, I deleted those videos since then, but as you can see on the screen, I still have, um, you know, still have some some clips of that. But with that said, uh, I would ship them out and I would use that to build my overall brand. That was the most success I had ever seen. You know, I'm a junior and a senior in the back of a high school classroom, literally making two thousand dollars in twenty five minutes some days. And the reason I was able to do this was I had a robot that bought the shoes. Now, unfortunately, trends changed as does any business. That's why I love trading because trading can't change. You just trade. Uh, but the business is very, very, very little profit to be had nowadays. 
And uh, for the time being though, it enabled me to save some money. And so 17 to 18, I saved a lot of money. Um, 18 to 19, saved a lot more money. I just became a bartender from 18 to 19. I'm still slinging these shoes, as you can imagine. Um, and then I stopped slinging shoes at about 19. Again, things already started to tighten up then. I got a good two years out of it. And, um, and that's when I was bartending. And then I turned 20. And I turned 20 February of that year, which would have been, um, of what was that, 17 or 18, whatever it is, I don't even, uh, whatever it was, um, of February. And by April of that year, I decided that the best move, would have been 17, the best move for me was to spend the summer off. And I'll never forget it. And I went to my mom, and I'm, I'm, I'm in, in high school, or I'm in college, excuse me, uh, but the college is in the same town. I elected to stay at home. I stayed at home to save money. And parents were totally cool with that. And I went to them and all I said was, I've saved $5,000, which at that time I thought was just the bee's knees. Um, but I saved $5,000, which, you know, what, whatever I was, 19 or 20 when I was approaching her, um, you know, it was a decent amount of money. I didn't have any expenditures other than literally a cell phone bill and car insurance. What is that? That was probably $150 a month were my expenditures. And uh, bartending, you know, that's what I would make in a night or two in just tips. And I would bartend, you know, say three nights a week, 12 nights a month. You know, I was making a few grand a month just bartending on tips alone. So I was doing okay technically for my age from an income to expense ratio, obviously. And I had saved 5,000 and I knew, you know, saving 5,000 with my expenses, again, literally 150 to 200 bucks a month, unless I wanted to be a kid and go spend money, I didn't have anything else. So I knew I could make it. I had $5,000 saved up. I was already succeeding trading. I said, I'm gonna quit. And I'm gonna come back in September. And my mom said, sure, do it. You might as well see that you have nothing to lose. You've saved some money. You have literally nothing to lose. She was fully, she was fully behind me. So I went into my boss. And I remember apologizing, saying, I'm sorry that I'm doing this to you. And they were totally behind me. They were amazing. To this day, I remain friends with them. They were totally behind me. And, and I just said, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back in September. I'm going to spend this summer off because I really want to take trading seriously. I really want to see if I can do this. And anyway, long story short, that leads me to my first tip. I did that, but I had saved enough money. And for everybody, it's going to be different. A lot of us in this room, you know, are, are not in that situation. Some of you guys are, but a lot of you guys aren't in that situation. You've, you've got families, you've got mouths to feed, as do I at this point in life. Um, you've got people to pay, as do I in this point in life. I've got, I've got assistance, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's it called? I've got assistants that are relying on me. I've got other people that are relying on me. I've got family relying on me. You know, every, everybody now, I'm, I'm in your boat, you know, 5,000 bucks wouldn't cut it. But that leads me to my first tip is that understand the reason I think I began to excel that summer, that's when everything took off. I never went back to work, by the way, as I'm sure you all know. Um, but the reason that that excelled and the reason I was then able to just trade, get through college, get my bachelor's degree, all that stuff, was I already had enough money saved. So that's tip number one today. Have enough money saved before you really push into trading full time or anything like that. Have money saved. A lot of you guys right now are not trading full time. Stay that way as long as you can. The moment you become a full time trader and you are relying on the markets for a full time income, you know the gap from demo to live from a mentality standpoint? There's another gap just as big from live to relying on the income. Because at that point in time, if you start to screw up, you don't get fed. You don't make money. Your income is zero or worse, it is negative. So that is my first tip is saving money up so that when you're able to try to move to this as a full-time or a part-time gig, you have enough saved so you're not in a bad situation, okay? So with that said, that now leads me as story time rolls on to part number two, which is understanding that the market is always right. And so just like you guys, when I first started trading, I sat down, I remember my first pair I ever traded was on Euro dollar and it was in front of my family the first time I'd ever traded when I was 18. 
we're, we're kind of backtracking now, but I was still uh, bartending and I was 18 and I remember I put 300 or $400 into a brokerage account and I successfully turned that money into $800 within that evening with uh, just three trades. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if, if I always follow what I just been taught, which is a strategy, just like you guys do with the DeLorean, if I always follow this, I'll make money. And your mind starts to just swirl. Have you guys ever been through this? Where you realize how much money you can actually make, you realize what you can do trading, and your mind, it goes bonkers. You're like, oh my gosh, this is what my car is gonna look like, my watch, my suit like my shoes, what I'm going to eat, vacation. You start doing weird things when you, at least you think that you can succeed. The next day, I'm sure you can all guess what happened. Gone. Everything. Zero. Nothing left in the account. I had this notion that I, if I did the correct thing every time, like an equation, 2 plus 2 equals 4, if I did everything correct every single time, that I would succeed. The market is always right. You can do, you can follow the four step check process. You can follow any of the, I'm not even talking about DeLorean alone. I'm talking about anything, any strategy, you can follow it. And there will be times where you won't make money. There will be times you won't make money. You will lose money on that trade. The market is always right. This is what people have trouble with because a lot of people, what they run into is winning actually hurts them more than losing. Because if they lose, they take a step back and they go, okay, what did I do wrong? But if they win, that's when they get ahead of themselves. They increase their risk, which is a huge no-no. They increase their risk. They jump in more trades. They think they know what they're doing and then they end up losing even more. Okay. So that is the second point of today. Understand that the market is always right, okay? That leads me to my third point that I have over here that I wanna talk about, which is on losses. You do not wanna look at one loss as a sign of an overall trend. Meaning you don't want to look at one loss that you have or one loss that the strategy you're trying to learn has and look at that as a sign of the overall performance of that strategy. What you need to understand is that the stock market returns negative returns some of its years. Meaning you could just overall jump in the S&P or the Dow or whatever you want to do. You could just come in any fund or index, whatever you want to do, and just write out the overall market. So it's an average of all the companies. And you could write it out. And some years you're going to lose money because some years everything goes bad. Does that make the market wrong? Does that make your strategy wrong? No. So what I'm saying here is if you can lose an overall year on the stock market, then why are you letting one loss or one day of losses or one week of losses or one month of losses or even one year of losses discourage you from what you're doing? Now, obviously with day trading in, in the currency market, we trade so much, we're usually able to adapt and figure out what we're doing wrong. And if you're blatantly doing something wrong, you have to fix it, no doubt about it. But one loss does not define the overall performance of any given strategy or your ability in the market or your talent in the market. One loss doesn't deem any of that. One loss is just a loss. The market's always right. Sometimes you're gonna get, get something wrong. Sometimes the market's gonna hand you some karma, if you will. Sometimes you're gonna lose. You guys have seen that just as much on yourselves as I'm sure in a live room. I, I mean, I'm not gonna you know, say anybody else is losing, but I'm gonna assume other educators lose trades from time to time. I know for a fact that you guys have been through losses with me and I'm open about that. And that happens because we're riding out the market, in and out, we're riding out the market, okay? And that leads me to number four point of today, which is finding what works for you. You must find what works for you. Maybe DeLorean swing trades are just what work. Maybe DeLorean scalping is just what works. Maybe the fringe trading is just what works. Or the US 30 breakout is just what works. You have to figure out what works for you. And what I mean by that is everything from how much you have to invest, the time you have to invest, the hours you are actually trading, 
all of this comes into play. Your spouse or your family, if they're even behind you on it, because some of you guys right now that are listening to this on this call, your family, your friends, your teachers, your brothers, your professors, your parents, your grandparents, your kids, they don't believe in you. Mom, dad, brother, sister, friend, spouse, whoever it is. Hey, you know trading's risky, right? I've been there and I've done that. I understand that. And what you guys need to understand is that you're going to get that. And you want to know how to stop it? There is no stopping it until you succeed. Until you're doing better than them. They're going to continue to treat you like you don't know what you're talking about. I've been treated this way my entire life. So what you need to understand is that that is not you. You need to find out what works for you. And you need to understand that outside pressures have nothing to do with you as an investor. When you are investing, you know your success. You know your truth. You know if you're making money or you know if you're not. And when you are doing better than those individuals, that's when they will let up and say, I knew, I knew you would succeed. I knew you would do it, little Johnny. I knew it. They always do it. And that's the same with business. That's the same with anything. Sports, maybe getting a degree. A bunch of people say, you know how hard that is, or you know how tough it is to get in the NFL, or, or you know how hard it is to get a job as a, as a head sales rep at such and such company, or you know how hard it is to day trade and time the market. Do you know how hard it was for all the people that ended up doing it? They're going to tell you it was difficult, but was it worth it? Absolutely. So find something that works for you. And that leads me to my next point, which is probably one of the more important points in this video as we kind of segue about 20 minutes in now, is prepare for the market. And what I mean by that is a lot of you guys come in the markets, especially right now, utilizing go lives. Man, this, this session is priceless. And, and it's everything that I can think of that will help you succeed, really. And what I'm saying is take notes on your own thoughts on the charts. And I look left because you guys that don't understand how my office works, I've got this desk for shooting and, and my laptop and administrative work and my assistant. And then I've got a desk actually over to my left, which is where I trade with you guys every day. So that's how my office works. But anyway, so that's why I look left there. And when I say take notes, I mean take notes on what you see on the charts in the day. Little notes. Hey, I'm, I'm noticing that we might have a DeLorean set up off of the 50 EMA tonight. And it can literally be a piece of paper or a notebook. In fact, that's what I do. Literally a notebook. And I write notes on it. And every day I just date the, the top and I write what I see. That way when I'm on a live session, if you guys have ever noticed, I'm jumping from one pair and then a completely unrelated pair, I just click. I'm like, we need to look at this too, guys. It's because I got a notebook here and I've already studied the market prior to the session. And you guys need to understand that you shouldn't be going into a session just with a notebook staring. If you like how I trade and you like my live sessions, I want to ask you one serious question. What happens, not if I'm gone, but when I'm gone? Eventually speaking, I won't be able to teach it anymore, right? Eventually, human beings, unfortunately, pass. At some point in life, I hope a long time, long time away, knock on wood, nothing ever happens to me, at some point down the line, I won't exist as a trader in a live room anymore. I'm not saying that's even in the next 10 years. I'm saying long way down the line. But what happens when your favorite live room person isn't there anymore? What happens when your favorite trader isn't public, publicly talking about his trades anymore? You're going to go, oh crap, I just realized I didn't learn anything for X amount of time. You need to take it upon you to, while you have somebody holding your literal hand saying, this is what you should trade, you need to take it upon yourself to really learn how to trade in the markets. And that leads me to kind of a branch in the same term, but forecast. You know when I draw lines on the charts and I'm saying, I think the market will go here? That's forecasting. Forecast where you think the market will go. Forecast everything. First of all, it'll help, help you chisel your ax. You're going to become a better trader doing this. The reason I say you're going to become a better trader doing this is because if you are forecasting, you're forcing yourself to think about the future, not in hindsight. We can all trade hindsight. Hindsight's 2020. 
we get paid to predict the future. So forecasting is by in nature demo trading. You're forecasting and you're guessing where you think price could go. But secondly, what it's doing is preparing you. You're preparing for what's about to happen in the market. And that's what you should be focused on, is preparing and forecasting what's coming in the market. Okay, so with that said, where'd my water go? I don't have my water. Anyway, let's keep moving on here. Uh, we want to then kind of move into more mentality of trading, and this kind of comes full circle now. I, I've just talked for a little bit about getting into trading, easing into it from, from, from a uh, financial standpoint. I've talked about all the things from saving the money, understanding the market, understanding other people judging you. But now I want to talk about visualizing where you want to be. And we have great people educating this company. As you guys know, we have the great Bob Proctor that teaches us weekly now. We have obviously Christopher Terry leading us from the front. We've got people in the likes of Jason Brown. We've got people like Alex Morton. We've got people like David Iminitier. We've got people like Matt Rosa. We've got people like Bryce Thompson that are showing us how to lead from the front and visualize what we want. I don't think there's any two people that I can think of on the top of my head that are better at explaining paradigms and your mindset than Bob Proctor and Alex Morton. And it's a one-two punch and one-two combo and we're great to have them and we're grateful to have them. One of the things that they talk about a lot is visualizing where you are and where you want to be. And the, 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 the biggest thing that I've picked up from them is they don't ever focus on how. You're here as a trader and you want to be here. They don't focus on how. They just focus on flicking it, getting it going, and going for it. And never stopping. Because if, if you have a visualization, what your visual is, this is an idea of what you want your future life to be. And it needs to be specific. I'm telling you, you need to have an initial goal of what you see when you grab your phone and you look at it and, and the first thing you want to do is you want to visualize what that number says in the bank account. You want to visualize what the house looks like. You want to visualize what the cars look like. You want to visualize what school you might be going to, or your kids might be going to. You want to visualize everything because that's an idea which leads to you believing that you can do it. And beliefs eventually will trickle into these habits and habits form actions and actions form results. So it's a domino effect. And I'm gonna be dead honest with you guys and you guys might agree or disagree with this. I didn't used to believe in the law of attraction. Even when I started trading, I didn't even know what it was. When I first heard about it, I thought it was some weird stuff, like Jedi stuff. Like they're in some, you know, they're, they're vibrating, they're vibrating and they're gonna magically appear a Range Rover or whatever, you know, I, I didn't think of that. It's not what I thought. And it took me a while to realize that it wasn't necessarily just saying I'm going to sit in this chair and envision a great life and think on what it's going to look like. No, that's not how it works. And I hope you guys know that. How it works is sitting here, writing down your goals on a piece of paper, understanding where you want to go, then getting to it. Without the getting to it, without the action, you're never going to get there. Ever. Ever. And so this is all just a big domino effect. Um, and, and that leads me to my next point, kind of getting out of that. But I just want you to understand that you need to write down your goals. You need to visualize where you're going. You need to visualize also where you've come from. You know, you, you don't want to look back to get ahead of yourself by any means, but you want to look back to compare where you are. And that seamlessly goes to my next point, which I've done a really good job of doing this. But I think a lot of you guys maybe haven't. And that is compare yourself to your goals, not to others. I think this is massive. Compare yourself to your goals, not others. So everybody needs to have a piece of paper that they write down their goals. I want to have this amount of money in my bank account. I want to go to church twice a week. I want to go to the gym six times a week. Notice how pinpointed these are. I want to drive a blank. I want to live in, you know, this type of house in this neighborhood. I want my kids to go to this school district. I want to have this much invested. I want to have this many rental properties. I want to make this much money trading every day. 
Everything is pinpointed. You want to compare yourself to where those goals are in comparison to where you are. What you don't want to do is compare yourself and pivot to another person. I don't even I don't want you guys comparing yourself to me, Tyrone, or anybody else. You don't want to do that. Because again, as I said in the beginning, in times of comparison, you are oftentimes not comparing apples to apples. You are oftentimes comparing your beginning of your journey to somebody's middle of their journey. You're here and they're here, but they're only here because they were here and they just went up and you're noticing that they're here and you just want to get here immediately. Why can't you? Well, you can't because you have to take the same journey they did. That is not possible without understanding where you need to go in comparison to where you're at in your goals. So compare yourself to others never. Compare yourself to others never. Never compare yourself to others, guys. Always compare yourself to your goals. That is another big key tip. Let's see, the last thing that I want to discuss before we end this is create rituals daily. You know, I, I let's face it. When we talk about trading as a investment opportunity, we are literally our own boss. This is a business. And a lot of you guys are treating this as a hobby. And uh, I, we've, we see it every single day. You know how Tyrone and I see it? Why on a Monday do, do we have X amount of people on our live room? And then Tuesday we have a little bit more people on our live room. And then Wednesday we have less people on the live room. And then Thursday we have even less on the live room. I mean, it's not exactly in that order, but we notice discrepancies. I understand maybe 10, 20% of people get busy, but for the most part, we should never see a discrepancy in the amount of people in the live room. Why? Because it better be a habit of what you do every single day. Remember, if you can do something 21 times in a row, so if you can just show up to our live rooms a month in a row, which is usually about 21 sessions a month, 20 sessions a month, if you can show up to that a month in a row, that is now a habit. You are used to the alarm going off at that time, getting up, hitting on the charts, and, and meeting up with whoever the educator you're watching. You want to make this a, a ritual game. Habits, rich. Tons of habits. I get up at this time, I do this every day, I do this every day. That is one of the reasons why if you guys have been on uh, any of my personal you know, YouTube videos, anything like that, I, I had a recent vlog that I talked about and that's one of the reasons why I have meal prep. Uh, believe it or not, I have meal prep where I have a, a company that cooks for me, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it might not sound appetizing to you guys, but I get Tupperware meals delivered to my home right to my doorstep and all I do is pop them in the microwave and all I do is click start. And guess what? Every single high level person I've ever met does meal prep. You know why? Because they don't have time to prep that sort of stuff. They only have time on income producing activities. That's why you might always say, why don't rich people mow their lawns? It's not because they're lazy in terms of they can just throw the money at 20, 40, 50, 80 bucks, whatever it is to cost to mow the lawn. It's because if I am to mow my lawn, I don't have a lawn, I live in an apartment, but let's say I'm at my parents' house, and if, if, if I lived in, say I own their house, and that's my lawn, I could either pay a, a kid 30 bucks to mow it, or I could mow it, okay? I have to determine whether I will make more or less than $30 during that time. So granted, it takes me two hours to mow it. In two hours, do you guys think I could make more than $30? Well, I mean, that's the question you want to ask yourself too, not just me, but in my perspective, yeah, I could make more than $30. So that's how I bring up the lawn mowing, but in, in relation to me, it's a meal prep. I could spend an hour to two hours a day prepping the meals. Um, 
you know, cooking the meals. I don't like meal prepping way ahead of time because it doesn't taste as good, in my opinion. If I, if I want to go through cooking, I might as well just cook it. And so that's why I chose to do meal prep. And, and secondly, just as a life tip, uh, if you guys eat out like I eat out way too much, anybody that knows me personally knows that. Um, but meal prep saves me a ton of money. It's seven to ten dollars a meal, so that's twenty-one to thirty bucks a day. And as you guys know, going out to eat, it's twenty-one to thirty bucks any given meal. And I go out to eat, literally, no exaggeration, ten to fifteen times a week. Um, you know, sometimes I mean, majority of the days I go out to eat at least two meals a day when we're when we're going at it per se. So meal prep saves money, increases efficiency. And it causes that habit because now I know at five, it's, you know, five in the morning, the alarm goes off. Five to 5.45, I spend on the charts and I analyze what's going on in the day. 5.45 uh, to six, I get the broadcast ready. I send out the notifications to you guys that I'm about to go live. Six to seven, we trade live. Seven to eight, I get ready for my day. I go, I eat breakfast, plop in the meal prep, Boom, bacon, eggs, pancakes every morning, confetti cakes. Um, and then go get ready for the day, you know, shower, do my whole thing, come out and start working. And by working, I mean get back on the charts and I'm looking at other plays, investment opportunities, long-term plays. And then after that in the afternoon, as you guys know, I dabble in other things. And that's the great thing about trading is it should help you to dabble in other investments. This should be used as a stepping stone for more. For me right now, I'm looking in high-end luxury real estate flips and I hope that you know I can do that at some point when I find a great deal and um, so that is how I do it and and it's all about daily discipline and some of you guys are scattered some of you guys still go to bed at 3 in the morning but you didn't even trade that night if you're gonna go to bed at 3 in the morning you might as well be up London session some of you guys go to bed at 3 get up at 6 and then go back to bed that's cool Make it a ritual, do what you can. And some of you guys work every day and that's fine. You gotta figure out where is your daily ritual going to be? How is your day going to mesh in the grand scheme of things in the market? And what I mean by that is, when are you available? London session, New York session, Asian range, when are you available? Because if you're only available Asian range, no wonder you're not having as much of success with the DeLorean. Obviously, we know that we teach you 2 to 10 a.m. Eastern is when you're trading. So if you realize that, then maybe some of you guys can start to finagle your schedule around a little bit and realize, oh my gosh, maybe that's why I'm not seeing as many opportunities. I'm trading at 8 p.m. Eastern when I know I shouldn't be. It's 2 to 10 a.m. Eastern. So again, you wanna focus on these windows and, and just focus on creating a discipline. So I encourage you guys, to set a schedule out as much as you can that says, I'm gonna get up now, I'm gonna go to bed at this time, but in the day too, you know, I'm gonna eat at this time, I'm gonna do this at this time. The better you can schedule your day and, and the better you can try to stick to it, the better you're gonna be. And the people that are more disciplined are gonna be better. And it's, it's kind of this blend of discipline and rituals that are gonna be the perfect harmony. And yeah, on the weekends, can you have some time off? Absolutely. Or maybe for you guys, it's it's one of the weekdays. For me, it's usually Fridays, to be honest. It's it's usually Fridays and Saturdays, and I, I kind of am a Sunday to Thursday type of person. Friday and Saturday, for whatever reason, I like it. I think it's the energy in the air. Everybody's happy on a Friday. Of course, it's payday. Everybody's happy on a Saturday. Everybody's, for the most part, off. I, I'm, I'm a big Sunday to Thursday type of guy. That's when I like to work. That's when I like to get work done. Sundays I like to prepare and I like to, you know, get get a game planning for the week in the market. I also like to get plans together for education and, and, and that's my job. That's what I do. And so Sunday through Thursday, that's what I do. So with that said, you know, with all of these tips given, all of this boot camp, all, everything said, I, I want to make this clear. Um, there's really this four words and it's, it's, you can do it. You guys can do it. And, uh, your mindset, what I just talked about, the psychological part of trading is understanding the market is always right. Understanding your portfolio management, not comparing, getting a plan together and sticking to it. But here's the trick with all of this. 
I can't teach it to you. For 45 minutes straight, I've been rattling to you guys like never before. I've never done this. This is the first video I've ever talked about this stuff. I've never shared my story like this. I've never done any of this. This is boot camp first. And for 40 straight minutes, I've rattled this to you. And you guys will not pick up on this, period. And it, uh, it's not, I'm not saying I did a bad job of that. It's just what it is. You guys will not understand the psychological part of trading until you go through the psychological part of trading. Like you don't understand the pain uh, of being sore after a really heavy workout until you've actually gone through and done the workout and the next day, the next two days, in my case, the next three days, you're feeling like you can't even walk. You won't know until you go through it. The psychological side of trading, the mental side of trading, this entire section, the 90% of trading, that is how big this is, is taught through experience. Wins, losses, break-evens, and economic events, technical analysis is all it's going to take to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Because remember, you don't have to know how you're going to get there. You just have to know you're going to get there. And all you have to do is get your wheels turning. So just to recap, guys, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you from myself and on behalf of the rest of the team at DeLorean, Tyrone and Abel and and, and everybody else in corporate. I just want to say thank you for making this boot camp what it has been. We took a risk doing this boot camp because we, we, we put a lot of money into production. We put a lot of money into bringing on by, you know, different language option in Spanish in the subtitles. Uh, we put a lot of time into the, the creation of it. And at the end of the day, we wanted this out here so not only for you guys to go back and replay, but think about that new person. Some of you guys might build this business. Some of you guys uh, you know, might, might go out there and share the plan, whatever, whatever you wanna do. And I want you to envision a person that's just starting. And I want you to know that I am building this so that you don't have to figure out how to, I'm trying to take the work off of you. So when you're talking to somebody about how you're making some money trading or, or how you've been learning how to trade and they're interested, you know for a fact that you can go and say, hey, alongside the academy, you can head into that DeLorean boot camp and go through days one through five and you have something there and you're gonna be able to pick up something. And I say that because you guys are the reason why DeLorean has continued to expand and get better. The live rooms are getting better. The technology is getting better. It's you guys. I hope you guys know that your support, telling other people to get DeLorean, Telling other people to come join us in our community, DeLorean Nation. That is what, making it, what is making this all better. That's what's making all of this possible, is you guys. Going out there and letting the world know about DeLorean Nation. Letting the world know about the product. Letting the world know about the strategy. Letting the world know about the live rooms. It's because of you guys. So with that said, if you got something out of the boot camp, share it with the world. Let the world know that the boot camp is where it was. Let the world know that DeLorean Nation is what they need to succeed. Let the world know. I again thank you guys so much for coming. It has been so much fun to see your guys' comments, your growth, your thoughts, your emotions. We have grown really far. Let me know in the comment section real quick down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the boot camp. Let me know what you thought. Zero meaning, Patrick, please never do this again. 10 meaning, do another. What did you guys think of the boot camp? Um, I tried my best to make this as best as possible. So I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Um, I got nothing else, guys. It's a Friday. We just finished up day five of the boot camp. That is a wrap on the first ever boot camp. Those of you guys that are speaking Spanish, thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to bring this to you and enjoy it with Spanish subtitles. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you let your friends know that speak Spanish anywhere around the world. It doesn't have to be any specific area. I hope you let all of them know that we have this for them so that they can learn too. So with that said, I will see you guys on my live sessions on the normal time in the morning and uh, have a great rest of your evening, guys. Thank you guys so much for the boot camp. Thanks for your attendance. God bless, guys. Until next time.